सो वेलकम आई डी स्टूडेंट्स टू वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सम इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्राम ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी विच आर आर नॉट सपोर्ट स्किप वर गोइंग टू डील दैम इन वेरी कंसाइज मैनर वेरी प्रिसाइज मैनर सो फर्स्ट टॉपिक आई चूज फ्राम द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम दैट इज़ अबाउट द एब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ न्यूट्रेंट्स एंड यू नो दैट इट्स ऑफ टू टाइप्स देर इज एक्टिव एब्जॉर्बशन एंड देर इज प्लेस यू एब्जॉर्बशन एक्टिव एब्जॉर्बशन रेफर्स टू दैट टाइप ऑब्जॉर्बशन वायर देर इज एनर्जी कंजप्शन वायर देर इज एनर्जी कंजप्शन with its energy consumption in the form of atps and the trick is gas gas so there are three molecules that are absorbed actively where g stands for glucose where g stands for glucose where this a stands for amino acids where a stands for amino acids and s stands for sodium glucose amino acid sodium these are the three molecules that are absorbed actively or their absorption requires the atp now there is passive absorption where there is no requirement of the atp no requirement of the energy there is there are three modes of uh, passive diffusion uh, passive transport absorption simple diffusion facilitated diffusion osmosis osmosis is the diffusion of water from its high concentration to its low concentration uh, which is from the hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution in simple diffusion the substance goes along its gradient it Uh, through the mem- permeable membrane permeable to it and the typical example is lipids small amount of chloride ions and small amount of glucose and amino acids small amount of glucose and amino acids for the facilitated diffusion the example is fructose f facilitated diffusion f fructose you should remember it like that and osmosis now here i should uh, give some stress on the absorption of lipids lipids are very special molecules lipids are first of all not soluble in the mucus so lipid absorption requires some steps if i consider this as the gut and if there is a lipid particle there is a lipid particle right here the lipid particle right here so it has to get absorbed into the uh into the um, blood but it doesn't get absorbed directly it gets absorbed into the lymph uh, capillaries which are also called as lacteals so you know the structure of villus there are lymph capillaries all as well as the uh, blood capillaries this is for example a lymph capillary what i uh, know by the name lacteal this is called as lacteal or lymph capillary and there are there are blood capillaries on the sides 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 so consider this as a blood capillary consider this as a blood capillary t consider this as a blood capillary now what happens this lipid particle which wants to get absorbed but there is a thin layer of mucus right here there is a thin layer of mucus right here there is a mucus layer right here there is a mucus layer which is lining the gut there is a mucus layer which is lining the gut and this lipid particle is not this hydrolyzed lipid is not soluble in it so what this lipid does this lipid particle combines with bile salt so this is a lipid particle this is a lipid particle i may zoom into it this lipid particle and it combines with another molecule which is none other than bile salt it's none other than bile salt and with bile salts these lipid molecules form a complex what is called as mesyl form a mesyl and this mesyl formation occurs inside the inside the mucus layer it occurs inside the mucus layer so this mesyl then is able to cross the mucus layer it enters the enterocyte so if there is the lipid particle now inside the enterocyte this enterocyte secretes a protein layer around this lipid particle this enterocyte secretes a protein layer around this lipid particle and this modified lipid particle is called as this modified lipid particle is called chylomicron this is called chylomicron but the size of chylomicron because of the protein coating the size of the chylomicron has increased so size has now increased as compared to the original lipid particle so when it gets wants to absorb when it wants to get absorbed it gets absorbed into these lymphatic capillaries because their pore size is high the pore size of blood capillary is very low so it's not able to get into the blood capillaries it goes into the lymphatic capillaries called as lacteals so what is it it inside there is the lymph inside the lapt- uh, lacteals or lymph capillaries so uh, note down these uh, steps in the lipid absorption first of all lipid combines with the bile salt to form the micelle micelle enters the intestinal cell gets protein coat to form the chylomicron then that chylomicron enters the lymphatic vessel or lacteal now the second topic that i have chosen is respiratory volumes and capacities so there are various volumes this these are measured by spirometer you should first of all remember that these are measured by an instrument that is called a spirometer spirometer and there are various there are two uh, axes in this graph there is a axis of volume inside the lungs then there is time 
now this amount of air which is normally inhaled or exhaled this amount of air which is normally inhaled or exhaled this is called as tidal volume this is called as tidal volume this is called as tidal volume and it is about 500 ml so normal amount of air that is inhaled or exhaled is tidal, tidal volume it is 500 ml now this is normal inspiration this normal inspiration up to this point and after normal expiration this is the extra amount of air that we can inspire this extra amount of air that we can inspire is inspiratory reserve volume it is inspiratory reserve volume it is inspiratory reserve volume which we denote by the term irv and it is almost 2500 to 3000 ml 3000 ml it is extra amount of air that we can inspire after normal inspiration now going to this point where normal expiration has ended so after normal expiration at this point this is the amount of air that we have expired forcefully so this amount of air that we have expired forcefully after normal expiration it is our expiratory reserve volume it's our expiratory reserve volume it's our expiratory reserve volume it's our expiratory reserve volume and this volume is about 1100 to this volume sorry about 1000 to 1100 ml it's about 1000 to 1100 ml now this amount of air that we cannot inspire expire at all this is called a residual volume this is called a residual volume which remains in lungs even after forceful expiration it's called a residual volume and this residual volume is about 1100 to 1200 ml 1100 to 1200 ml now by combining the volumes we can get capacities for example we have this inspiratory capacity which is equal to tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume we have this expiratory capacity which is equal to tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume we have this functional residual capacity which is equal to expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume then we have to vital capacity which is equal to inspiratory reserve volume tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume and uh, we have the total lung capacity which is sum of all volumes in a spread reserve volume tidal volume expert reserve volume and a residual volume these are our capacities we can easily understand these capacities as as well if we look at the graph carefully now going on to the third topic which is structure of kidney which is structure of kidney about the structure of kidney first of all we and nephron first of all about the structure of kidney this kidney has a concavity right here through which the ureter enters this is called as hilum and this tube which is entering into it is called as ureter it's called ureter now this dilation of the ureter is called as pelvis it is called a renal pelvis and these passages from pelvis these are called major calyces we call them major calyces which are called the major calyces one singular is called major calyx now these small passages these are called minor calyces which arise from the major calyces and these conical structures on these minor calyces these are called as renal pyramids these are called as renal pyramids renal pyramids and all this area above the pyramids this is called as renal cortex this is called as renal cortex this is called as renal cortex this cortex the portion of the cortex inside the between the pyramids this, these are called as cortical columns cortical columns these are called cortical columns of bertini these are called as cortical columns of bertini this is a special point you can be asked about this cortical columns of bertini these are areas of cortex between the pyramids now this covering this is called as renal fascia this is called a renal capsule sorry capsule this is renal fat this is renal fat and this is renal capsule fascia it's renal fascia these are the three coverings capsule fascia and fat so this is ureter this is ureter the concavity is called hilum the dilation is called pelvis the passages immediate passage arising from the pelvis are called major calyces smaller passages are called minor calyces the conical structures are called renal pyramids the whole portion above it is called cortex and the portion of cortex between the pyramids is called cortical cortical columns of bertini then we have renal capsule renal fat and renal fascia now about the structure of the nephron nephron is present the structural and unit uh, and functional unit of the kidney nephron is divided into two parts this part is called as malfusion corpuscle above this line and then there is this malfusion tubule in malfusion corpuscle this double layered cup is called bominous capsule this is called bominous capsule this double layered cup this double layered cup double layered cup and this tuft of capillaries is called as glomerulus this tuft of capillaries is called as glomerulus 
tuft of capillaries this is called as glomerulus glomerulus now this artery is called afferent arteriole this artery which brings blood into the glomerulus is called afferent arteriole afferent arteriole and this artery which exits from this glomerulus it is called efferent arteriole it's called efferent arteriole it's called efferent arteriole now important thing this first tube here first convoluted tube is called proximal convoluted tubule or pct this second one convolution is called distal convoluted tubule or dct distal means the far away and this u-shaped part is called as hanil's loop or loop of hanil hanil's loop or loop of hanil this limb of hanil's loop is called descending limb and this one is called ascending limb so this is our descending limb descending limb and this one is our ascending limb ascending limb and this last duct into which various uh, dct is drained this is called a collecting duct collecting duct one thing you should note down everything above this line is present in the renal cortex everything above this line is present in the renal cortex so this is our renal cortex and everything below this line is present in the renal medulla so our malfusion corpuscle our pct dct all are present in cortex and our leaf loop of anil in a part of collecting duct are present in our uh, medulla are present in our medulla so that is about the nephron after that i have chosen the th fourth topic that is structure of muscle if you look at this as a cross section of a muscle and this cross section you find there are various bundles in the muscle these bundles are called as fascicles these bundles of muscle cells are called fascicles and this fascicle is covered by this covering which is called as perimysium which is called as perimysium this covering is called as perimysium and there are these are muscle cells these are muscle cells inside muscle cells inside these muscle cells are covered by this red colored covering this red colored covering is called endomysium this is called endomysium and the whole fascicles are covered by this covering called epimysium epimysium now i have brought this muscle cell outside this is muscle cell or what we also known as myofiber muscle fiber sorry or myocyte myocyte or muscle fiber or muscle fiber now you see there are various parallel thread like structures in this muscle cell these thread like structures are called as myofibrils these are called as myofibrils these are called as myofibrils i have taken one of the myofibrils out and what i am seeing on this myofibrils you observe these alternate dark and light bands so this is a dark band this is a dark band which is also called as a band also called as a band because it is iso anisotropic to light and this one is our light band which is also called as i band because it is isotropic to light this one is an isotropic this one is isotropic to light so that's why it's also called as i band now inside this a band, dark band or a band you have this light zone this light zone is called as h zone this is called as h zone this is called as h zone and inside the dark band inside the light band or i band there is a dark line this is called as z line this is called as z line we also find thin dark line inside the edge zone which is also known by the name m line it's also known by the name m line it's also known by the name m line m line now the area between two z lines is called as sarcomere which is a functional unit of muscle contraction that is a functional unit of muscle contraction now i have taken one sarcomere out in this sarcomere this one is my z line this one is my z line this one is also my z line this one is also my z line so there are two sarcomeres right in their diagram i see this sarcomere is in turn made up of these proteinaceous structures these are called myofilaments out of these myofilaments some are thin so this one labeled is a thin myofilament and some are thick so this one labeled here is a thick myofilament it's a thick myofilament it's a thick myofilament this thin myofilament is also called as is also called as actin filament it's also called as actin filament and this thick myofilament is also called as myosin filament it's also called as myosin filament it's also called myosin filament now you have to look closely and observe that our dark band is the area contained within our within our thick myofilaments so the dark band is the area contained within our thick myofilaments it can have some overlapping with thin myofilaments or it can have some unoverlapped region this unoverlapped region in the center 
which contains only thick myofilaments it is what forms our h zone it is what forms our h zone and this portion which contains only thin myofilaments this is our light band or our eye band this is our light band or our light eye band light band or our eye band now for the structure of the myofilaments that you can read yourself this was a brief overview about the structure now going into the fifth topic from the circulatory system which is electrocardiogram electrocardiogram is nothing it is a graphical representation of the electrical events in heart it's graphical representation of electrical events in heart electrical events in heart so the graphical representation of electrical events in heart is called as cardio uh, this electrocardiogram or ecg is called as electrocardiogram or ecg electrocardiogram or ecg now in this electrocardiogram we use three electrodes the three electrodes out of which one is connected at this one is connected on the right arm other is connected on the left arm and other is connected on the left leg so right arm left arm and left leg there is our heart on the left side now when we get this ecg we have three waves in total this wave is called p wave this is called qrs complex this is called t wave now importantly note down this p wave is representing your atrial depolarization this is representing your atrial depolarization this is the wave formed due to atrial depolarization or what we also known as systole this qrs complex it is formed by our ventricular depolarization it is formed by our ventricular depolarization depolarization or what we call as ventricular systole and this t wave it is formed by our ventricular repolarization ventricular repolarization ventricular repolarization or what we can say diastole or what we can say end of systole as your book has written end of systole now importantly remember we can determine the heart rate from the ecg by counting the number of qrs complex so qrs complexes are used to determine the heart rate so if we count them we can determine the heart rate from ecg we count them for a particular time period and then multiply by a specific multiplicate next topic that i have chosen that is the classification of hormones so we have four basic types of hormones we have four types of hormones it is from the endocrine system we have so called peptide or proteinaceous hormones we have steroid hormones which are derived from cholesterol we have amino acid derivatives amino acid derivatives and we have so called iodo hormones iodo hormones importantly remember these iodo hormones include thyroid hormones t3 and t4 they include thyroid hormones that is t3 and t4 that is t3 and t4 these amino acid derivatives include epinephrine and norepinephrine the important examples are epinephrine and norepinephrine which we also know by the name adrenaline and noradrenaline and they are derived from the amino acid tyrosine they are derived from amino acid tyrosine steroid hormones include our hormones of adrenal cortex adrenal cortex hormones of adrenal cortex that is aldosterone that's aldosterone that is cortisol that is the dihydroestrogens uh, that is the androgens and it also includes the hormones of gonads which again include estrogens and androgens along with progesterone along with progesterone along with progesterone then rest of the glands those hormones are peptide hormones for example pituitary hormones all pituitary hormones are peptide hormones for example hypothalamic hormones all hypothalamic hormones are uh, peptide hormones for example our hormones of thymus thymic hormones for example our hormones of thyroid uh, this parathyroid these are all examples of peptide hormone pancreas the all rest of the hormones are peptide hormones or proteinaceous hormones then at last i have chosen the chapter number 7 the last chapter of physiology nervous system i have chosen the structure of neuron in the structure of neuron you find this uh, spherical portion this is called as cyton or soma or soma or cell body a cell body 
and these are the processes among the processes there is this short process called dendrite and there is this long process called as exon called as exon there's this long process called as exon this is the nucleus of the cyton this is the nucleus of the cyton this is the cytoplasm which is also called as neuroplasm this is a neuroplasm neuroplasm one thing you note that the point of origin of exon is called exon hillock that is called as exon hillock the point of origin of exon is called exon hillock now there are these granular structures in the neuroplasm these granular structures are called as nasalus granules nasalus granules these nasalus granules are actually modified rough endoplasmic reticuli and their function is protein synthesis their function is protein synthesis now importantly remember that exon doesn't contain any nasalus granules exon doesn't contain any nasalus granules okay exon's dendrite contains nasalus granules but exon has no nasalus granules no nasalus granules nasalus granules are absent in exon now dendrite receives the impulses whereas exon takes the impulses out of the cell body that is also an important this is an efferent pathway this is an f this is an efferent pathway sorry this is an efferent pathway this is an efferent pathway and this is an efferent pathway efferent pathway efferent pathway now this exon has this last branches of exon these last branches of exons are called as telodendria these are called telodendria or terminal arborization these last branches of exon are called telodendria or terminal arborizations and their swollen tips are called as synaptic knobs their swollen tips are called as synaptic knobs these synaptic knobs contain these packets these packets are called as synaptic vesicles synaptic vesicles and these synaptic vesicles contain our neurotransmitters contain neurotransmitters like acetylcholine neurotransmitters like acetylcholine acetylcholine these contain neurotransmitters like acetylcholine now you might observe this exon is covered by this insulating material green colored insulating material that is called as myelin sheath myelin sheet that is called as myelin sheet that's called as myelin sheet and the space between two adjacent myelin sheets is called as node of ranvier this is called as node of ranvier the space between the adjacent myelin sheets is called as node of ranvier so it is covered with myelin sheet and the space between the myelin sheets two myelin sheets is called as node of ranvier you should remember this thing node of ranvier is the space between two adjacent myelin sheets important thing about myelin sheet with the question which has been asked myelin sheet myelin sheet is formed by two cells myelin sheet is formed by schwann cell is formed by schwann cell in peripheral nervous system and it is formed by oligodendrocyte oligodendrocyte in central nervous system in central nervous system now importantly about the types of neurons there are four types of neurons unipolar neurons which have single process they are present in embryo they are present in embryo bipolar neurons which have two processes one exon and dendrite they are present in retina retina cochlea etc multipolar neurons which are present in cerebral cortex or cerebrum and pseudo unipolar neurons which have a single process which have single process that divides into two branches it is present in dorsal root ganglion of spinal cord dorsal root ganglion of spinal cord spinal cord this spinal cord had contains if we look at the spinal cord if we look at the spinal cord this is cross section of our spinal cord this is a cross section of our spinal cord spinal cord has inner gray matter this s shaped gray matter s shaped gray matter and from this s shaped gray matter two horns ventral horn and anterior horn dorsal horn arise associated with this ventral dorsal horn there is a ganglion accumulation of cells and that accumulation of cells contains these pseudo unipolar neurons which have two processes like this so dorsal root ganglion is a, a collection of cell bodies 
associated with the dorsal horn of spinal cord dorsal root of the spinal cord of the spinal nerve and it contains pseudo unipolar neurons so unipolar means single process bipolar means two process one exon one dendria and multipolar means many processes many dendria and one exon and pseudo unipolar means one process dividing into two branches okay that was a rapid revision of some of the topics that we have in physiology that you should not skip at all so thank you for staying there thank you for listening to this rapid revision of some topics see you in the next video